Welcome Trinity Kids. I'm Susan Moores and I'm so glad to be able to spend time with you today by teaching you the lesson. We're in week two of our We Are Family lessons where we're learning about families. And speaking of families, our Trinity Kids family has a very special member. You may recognize her. Her name is Mary Camara and she lives in Sierra Leone, Africa. One thing we are learning about families is that they take care of each other. And here at Trinity Kids, we help take care of Mary financially by supporting her with our offerings each week. As a reminder, the giving link is found on our Facebook page. Ask your parents to help you and check out some pictures of Mary while you're there. Thank you for helping us to take such good care of Mary. Let me ask you this. Have you and your family ever gone hiking? If you have gone before, you know you have to take a lot of stuff with you, especially if you are planning to hike a long way. It is helpful to have a backpack to put everything in. Here's what my family takes along when we go hiking. I'll show you what's in the bag. First of all, everybody takes a water bottle so that we can all stay hydrated. And to go along with that, we take a big bag, bag, baggie of snacks like granola bars or cheese sticks or trail mix so that we can have enough energy to keep going. The next thing we take is um, some sunscreen so that we won't get sunburned. And to go along with that, we take some bug spray to keep the bugs away. The next thing we take is a hat to keep our head from getting sunburned and to shade our eyes. We take sunglasses to protect our eyes and we take a map so that we can know which trails to take. And last but not least, we take a phone so that we can take selfies of our family, of course. Do you take all this stuff when you go hiking? Well, it is important to have all this when you're going out in nature. Okay this away from my hiking trip. Last week, we talked about how Abraham finally had the son God had promised he would have. Today, we'll learn about a hike that Abraham had to take and how he trusted God. First, let's find out a little bit about your families. I'm going to ask a question about your family and then give you two options or choices. Choose the one that is most like your family. This activity is called, Would You Rather? Or in this case, Would Your Family Rather? So here's the first one. Would your family rather go to a movie or go bowling? Think about it. Which one would your family rather do? The next one, would your family rather go to the beach or go to the mountains? Would your family rather have a dog or a cat? Would your, your family rather take a trip on a train? There's a train going through a scenic mountain area or on an airplane. Would your family rather go on a hike or play a board game? Hmm. And the last one to think about your family would your family rather cook 
and eat a meal at home or go out to eat. Hmm. Were any of those decisions difficult to make? I know I would have had a hard time making a few of those choices. Well, in today's story, God gave Abraham a very hard choice to make. Let's look at the big idea before we hear the story though. The big idea is on these five cards. And as I hold each card up one at a time, I'm going to have you read it out loud with me, or you can have a family member help you read it. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. The big idea is God takes care of our families. God takes care of our families. That's good news. Even when hard things happen, we can trust that God is always with us, taking care of us. Let's get ready to hear a story from the Bible about how God took care of Abraham and his son. Our Bible story comes from the very first book in the Bible, which is Genesis. It's the 22nd chapter and it's verses one through 18. Last week, we learned about when God told Abraham and Sarah they would have a baby. Does anyone remember what they named their baby? That's right, they had a baby boy who they named Isaac. Abraham and Sarah loved Isaac so much. Today, we're going to learn about something crazy that happened when Isaac was a little older. Our story will come from the Jesus Storybook Bible. I'm going to read it to you today. It's called The Present. God knew that his secret rescue plan could only work if Abraham trusted him completely. God had to make sure Abraham would do whatever he asked. So, a few years later, God asked Abraham to give him a present. Abraham liked giving presents to God. He gave God his animals. They were called sacrifices, and they were a way to say, I love you, to God. But this time, God didn't want a lamb or a goat God wanted Abraham to give him something more, much more. He wanted Abraham to give him his son, his only son, the son he loved, Isaac. Put his boy on the altar and kill him as the sacrifice? How could God want him to do such a terrible thing? Abraham didn't understand, but he knew that God was his father who loved him. And so Abraham trusted him. Early the next morning, Abraham and Isaac set off. They climbed the steep stony trail up the mountain. Isaac carried the wood on his back and his father carried the knife and the coals. Papa, Isaac said, we have everything except we forgot the sacrifice, the lamb for the sacrifice. God will give us the lamb, son, Abraham said. They built an altar and laid the wood on top. Abraham asked his son to climb on top of the wood. Isaac didn't understand, but he knew his father loved him. And so he trusted him. He climbed up onto the altar and Abraham tied his boy to the wood. Isaac didn't struggle or try to run away. He just lay there quietly and didn't make a sound. Everything was ready. Abraham took the knife. Tears were filling his eyes. 
pain was filling up his heart. His hand was shaking. He lifted the knife high into the air. Stop, God said. Don't hurt the boy. I want him to live and not die. I now know that you love me because you would have given me your only son. Abraham felt his heart leap with joy. He unbound Isaac and folded him in his arms. Great sobs shook the old man's whole body. Scalding tears filled his eyes. And for a long time, they stayed there like that, in each other's arms, the boy and his dad. Suddenly, Abraham caught, saw a ram caught in some brambles. The sacrifice, God had given them what they needed just in time. The ram would die, so Isaac didn't have to. And so Abraham sacrificed the ram instead of his son. And as they sat there on the mountaintop, watching the embers of the fire die in the cool night air, the stars above them sparkling in the velvet sky, God helped Abraham and Isaac understand something. God wanted his people to live, not die. God wanted to rescue his people, not punish them. But they must trust him. One day, someone will be born into your family, God promised them, and he will bring happiness to the whole world. God was getting ready to give the whole world a wonderful present. It would be God's way to tell his people, I love you. Many years later, another son would climb another hill, carrying wood on his back. Like Isaac, he would trust his father and do what his father asked. He wouldn't struggle or run away. Who was he? God's son, his only son, the son he loved, the Lamb of God, Jesus. What hard thing did God ask Abraham to do? Yes, he asked Abraham to make a big sacrifice, to give up his son. Remember, Isaac was the son God had promised to Abraham and Sarah. God had promised to make many people come from Abraham's family. Isaac was the way God was going to do that. How do you think Abraham felt when God asked him to give up his son? I agree. It must have been very hard and sad and scary for Abraham to obey. He trusted God to know what was best for his family and did what God asked him to do. Abraham knew God would take care of them. What did Abraham tell Isaac when he asked about the sacrifice? Yes, he said, God will provide. Just before Abraham was going to give up, give up his son Isaac, God did something amazing to care to take care of them. What did God provide? Remember, He provided. in the bushes and told Abraham to sacrifice the ram instead. God's instructions didn't make a lot of sense, but Abraham still obeyed. Abraham showed his faith and God showed Abraham his faithfulness. God provided a miracle so Abraham didn't have to give up his son. He put a ram in the bushes to be sacrificed to God instead of Isaac. Abraham trusted God, and God took care of his family. What is something difficult your family has been through?
Is it easy for you to trust God in hard times? How can we trust that God is taking care of our family? We may have things happen in our families that make us wonder if God is really taking care of us. We may have hard times in our families. We may not always get along with our family members or we may not get what we want. But God provides in unique and wonderful ways. God sent a ram to be the offering instead of Isaac. God looked out for them and took care of them. We can trust God will be with us and take care of our families too. God protects us from so many things, but that doesn't mean we won't face difficult times. When bad things do happen, God gives us strength and walks with us through them. Sometimes we don't know where or when problems will happen. Our world is hurt by sin, and unfortunately, that affects our families. There isn't a perfect family or a family without problems and hard times, but we can know that God will take care of us during the hard times. We can trust God to do what is best for our families. Well, we've been doing a lot of thinking and listening and learning. I think it's time to worship. Today, our song is about trusting Jesus, and it's from Rocky Railway VBS. So it might be familiar to a lot of you. Let's get up and move. fun. Let's take a look at what the Bible has to say now. Our scripture comes from the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. So let's look it up in the Bible. I do have it marked. Philippians 4 verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Do you ever get worried or anxious about your family or situations you're going through? I know I worry about things from time to time. What does this verse say we should do instead of worry? 
That's right. This Bible verse tells us to pray about everything. Tell God what we need and then thank him for taking good care of us. It's time to watch a short video called Preparing for Jesus. Watch carefully so that we can discuss some questions afterward. God's story, preparing for Jesus. So part of God's story is about how he prepared us for Jesus, and it begins like this. Remember when God created a perfect garden? He then created a perfect family, Adam and Eve, to live in the garden with him forever. He trusted them with life as long as they obeyed one rule. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve didn't trust God, and they disobeyed. Now Adam, Eve, everyone would have to die, separating us from God forever. This made God very sad, but he had a plan. He knew that he could still save his people through a great rescue, Jesus. Jesus was a big deal, and just like any big deal, people had to get ready for him. It's like before a big movie comes out, you watch the previews so you know what's coming. Well, Jesus was such a big deal that his previews started thousands of years before he came. The first preview is about a man named Abraham. God promised to make Abraham the father of God's special family. God gave Abraham one special son to start the family, Isaac. Now Abraham knew that one day he would have to die because of what happened in the garden. Every time Abraham did something wrong, God could have said, okay, because you've done this bad thing, you now have to die. But he didn't. Instead, God said, how about killing a lamb instead? It can die so you don't have to. Thank you, said Abraham. But one day, God asked Abraham to do something different. God said, okay, because you've done this bad thing, your son Isaac has to die. This made Abraham very sad, but he decided to trust him anyway, even though this meant that he would never have the giant family God had promised. When Isaac asked where the sacrifice was, Abraham said, God will provide it. And guess what? He did. A ram died, so Isaac didn't have to. The second preview happened hundreds of years later. Abraham's family, the Israelites, had gotten huge, but they were stuck as slaves in Egypt under a mean king called Pharaoh. He would not let the Israelites leave, so God said, okay, because Pharaoh has done this bad thing, every firstborn son in the land of Egypt has to die. The bad news was this meant that the Israelite sons would have to die along with the Egyptian sons. But the good news was God, once again, created a rescue plan. God said, anyone who kills a lamb and paints the blood on their door will be saved. The destroyer will pass over your house. The lambs died so the sons didn't have to. Over and over again, when there was trouble, God sent a sheep to die so his people didn't have to. Until finally, God revealed his final rescue plan. The previews were over. It was time for the feature presentation. At last, Jesus the rescuer came. He lived on earth just like us, but then he died to take away the punishment we deserved. Jesus died so we don't have to. But guess what else? Jesus didn't stay dead like the sheep. He came back to life and went up to heaven. Now we can be close to God again. And one day, he'll recreate a perfect world for God's whole family to live in forever. Just like the original garden, but better. And that's the story of how God prepared us for Jesus. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Death separated us from God. God planned a great rescue. He gave us previews. A ram died so Isaac didn't have to. Lambs died so the Israelite sons didn't have to. Finally, Jesus died so we don't have to. But Jesus came back to life. Now death can't separate us from God. And that's a part of God's story. Welcome back. How does sacrificing the lamb or ram point to Jesus? It is a preview of how God would rescue us by sending Jesus to die in our place. Why did we need Jesus to die as a sacrifice? Because we are all born with sin inside us. That means we do things we aren't supposed to do. 
Abraham, Abraham had no idea that the really big test God had for him would point people to what Jesus would do for the entire world. God's request made no sense at the time, but thousands of years later, we can see how it was a preview to what Jesus would do. God willingly sent Jesus to rescue us. Jesus willingly gave his life for us. God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to take the punishment we deserve for our sins. If we believe that Jesus died to save us from our sins, then we will live with him in heaven forever. That's good news. Now it's time to work on our memory verses. Okay, our Bible memory verse for our We Are Family lessons is Romans chapter eight, verse 28. I'll read it first for you. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Say it with me. Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Now there are actions that go with this Bible memory verse. I'll do the actions for you first. We know, point to your head, that in all things, spread your arms out in a big circle, God, point to the sky, works for the good, give a thumbs up, of those, hold your arms out in front of you, palms up, who love him. Cross your arms in a big X. Let's do it again together. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Very good. Okay, our older kids have a second memory verse, and it comes from the book of Psalms 23, verses 1 through 3. And as you can see, it's quite long. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. He lets me lie down in fields of green grass. He leads me beside quiet waters. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths for the honor of his name. Both of these verses are excellent ones to remember. Okay, let's spend some time talking with God in prayer. Would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us and for giving us our families. Help us to trust you to take care of our families in both the good times and the hard times. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, we've reached the end of our time together today. But one last thing, be sure to check out our Trinity Kids Papio Facebook page to check out the extra activities that you can try with your family at home. They'd be a great way to spend time with your family. Thanks for joining me at Trinity Kids today. Have a great week and take care.